Hello and welcome to UPSC History Optional. Today we are going to talk about the third and the last and final part of the American Revolution. Although American Constitution remains as a different topic, very important for from our exam point of view. But as such about the revolution, this is the last part. So if you haven't already seen the first two, please do so. So in the last podcast, we discussed about the drastic measures taken by the British Crown. The drastic measures included the such as intolerable acts and the closure of Boston Harbor in response to the Boston Tea Party. So Boston Tea Party is a very important and landmark event in the American Revolution. And you can uh, listen about that in the previous podcast. So when the Boston Tea Party happened, the British crown reacted very sharply and negatively to it. So even though many American leaders such as Benjamin Franklin and George Washington himself didn't support the Tea Party, which was conducted by the Sons of Liberty, the famous organization led by Samuel Adams. All these are keywords, very important for your exam. So please keep them in mind and note them if necessary. Although people like Benjamin Franklin and Washington did not support the Tea Party, but the drastic measures taken by by the Crown, the drastic measure that I just mentioned, so they united all the colonists, all the Americans. It would be too much to say that all of them were, were American because America did not come into existence till then. But they were the colonists, the people belonging to 13 colonies. So in response to this drastic measures taken by the Crown, the first Continental Congress was summoned. In this Congress, basically representatives from all 13 colonies assembled in Philadelphia in September 1774 and discussed their future course of action. So many patriotic leaders like Patrick Henry, George Washington, Samuel Adams, John Dickinson, etc. were assembled. So the basically Congress appealed to the king to, rem- to remove restrictions on American industry and trade and also not to impose taxes on them without their consent. The famous slogan, no taxation without representation. So some kind of that. It also appealed to the crown to not station British army in the colonies without the consent of the colonies. And as you would recall, if you have seen the previous video, that this this was largely due to the Quartering Act, which was passed by the British Parliament, in which uh, it was mandatory for a person to provide uh, accommodation to the British soldiers. Even civilians were mandated to provide them accommodation in their homes, in their farms, etc. So, this was it. The king, the crown, George III, did not take this development positively. In fact, he declared this event to be a mutiny and sent a force to suppress it. So, basically, when a force was sent to suppress them, the colonists posed a military defense. And the first battle of revolution took place in 1775 in Massachusetts. So this was a landmark event when first time the colonists fought with the army of their mother country. Although at a lower level, uh, at a smaller level, it, it had happened in 1770 in the Boston Massacre. But that was a localized event. So thereafter, the Second Congress assembled in 1776 in Pennsylvania. So apart from the members of the First Congress that we have already discussed, new members such as Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson also joined in. Here, they declared the Constitution, not the Constitution, they declared a new military called New England, which was constituted. And George Washington was declared the commander-in-chief of this New England military in June 1775. So basically when this new military was formulated, for some months the Congress kept saying that Americans were basically struggling for their rights within the British Empire. But it gradually started to cut tie from the Britain. 
this is similar to the like let, let's connect it a bit to the indian scenario when the early moderates uh, were struggling for you know more rights to india they claimed in the early stage that they were fighting for india to have its rights within the british empire itself the so same position was adopted by these people in continental congress initially they said that they wanted again i repeat they maintained that americans were struggling for their rights within the british empire but slowly slowly they drifted away in june uh, a in july 2 in uh, on july 2 1776 the congress unanimously resolved that these united colonies are of right ought to be free and independent states and after two days the de declaration of independence was made on july 4th 1776 so basically this declaration of independence had a very revolutionary character because a country uh, which uh, at the outset declared that all men are created equal and the it recognized the inalienable rights of mankind like life liberty and pursuit of happiness etc so we will discuss all these ideas when we will discuss the american constitution that is a part of our syllabus very important for the exam many previous year questions have been asked from that topic so basically after this step the colonists fought for their rights as englishmen uh, i'm sorry till this stage the colonists had fought for their rights as englishmen now they fought for their independence so as we have discussed the george washington had been made in charge of the american militia and it fought and ultimately after a long long struggle defeated the better trained and equipped british forces it is although not a part of our syllabus but it is very interesting this war books have been written on it and you know this was not a traditional one day war when uh, america or the colonies versus britain was there it was a years long war and you know it was on and off fought on a low scale usually it is said that at any time the size of american army was not more than 20000 so it was a small scale war usually happening at one point or the other point but slowly it tired the britishers and uh, it is interesting to know other enemies of britain like france spain and holland also supported the cause of american independence so basically they helped the colonies in providing them money men material naval support weapons etc so that they can effectively fight the british and defeat them so this ultimately happened the war continued for several years on and off finally british commander cornwallis surrendered in 1781 this man cornwallis as you will study was then made the governor general of india in 1786 and he brought many important reforms in the many parts of the administration so just after he surrendered in americas after 5 years he was dispatched to india on very important mission so you know it's interesting to connect the things so basically in 1783 british britain formally recognized the independence of 13 former colonies in the treaty of paris 